Dimitar, and welcome to the third lesson of our series for Blender for concept design for architects and designers. So in the previous menu we learned how to modify an object in edit mode. Now we'll see what we can do in object mode. So we'll quickly change this object around a little bit. If I hit tab, we go into edit mode, which is the same as this here. So control tab is the same as these buttons here. So I just went into face select mode. I'll shift select this. We'll edit. I'll create a loop. Keep it in the middle by pressing escape. Selecting this edge, moving it out. Create another loop here. Maybe a loop here and a loop here. We'll move these vertices out. Scale these vertices out. I just disabled the manipulator briefly so I can have an easier time with my selection. Now I'll enable it again. So here we have an object. Now go back to edit mode. I'll move this here. And a cool feature of Blender, similar to instancing in 3ds Max and Maya, is linked duplicates. So in here we see we have duplicate and we have duplicate linked. So if we hit that and we move the object, and if you go back to edit mode and change anything on, on this object, we'll see that it will also change in all the linked elements. So I will undo this and go back to object mode by hitting tab. So this is really nice because we have editing tools in edit mode which affect all the objects that are linked but we also have we can scale we can rotate in object mode so if we select this object for example we put this side menu here again by the way the shortcut for that is n and i think no this one doesn't have it usually when we hover over things if there's a shortcut associated with it it will tell us what it is so for example here if we join is control j Okay, so back to this object. So we can see now that if we scale it, it scales only this one and not the original linked object. That's because each of these objects, they're like containers. And those containers, they contain the actual mesh data. So the containers, they're individual and they can be scaled, rotated, manipulated in any way we like. Whereas the mesh data that's inside of them, that stays the same. So now if we once again go into edit mode and we move, we can see that even though this is much larger, if we edit something on the smaller item, it also changes on the larger item. So again, if we rotate scale it in any way and we and we create another duplicate maybe this one we turn upside down by scaling in the z-axis and we see that once again if we change one we we'll change all of them so this is link duplicates now we'll also go into the modifier stack, which is also on the object level. So in here, I'll just close this button, or this menu rather. I'll close this one as well. Make this one a little bit bigger. And here we have the properties menu. And we will go to this one, the little key tool, which is object modifiers. So if we add a modifier, 
and we select array we can see that we simply do an array and we can either do with relative offsets so that's relative to the actual unit so one is the box that would cover the whole unit or we can also do constant offsets as well and we can do a mixture of both so if we go now into one of those objects and let's see we change these two vertices let's just disable this so let's just work with relative offset and you see that all these scale proportionately so that's the array modifier let's move these guys out of the way now create a new object shift a mesh plane I'll subdivide it or rather I'll create a couple of loop cuts so pull this menu out again here loop cut and slide I'll select 2 enter escape I'll go into edge mode by hitting control tab I shift select these two edges I scale them then I move them up and I'll do another loop cut Control R for the loop cut I will press escape because I want to keep it exactly in the middle select this move it up we'll extrude these edges by hitting E and I'll hit the middle mouse button and I will lock it to the nearest axis Just move these guys a little bit out. And maybe move these guys a little bit out. Okay, so now we have another object. So now I went back into object mode by hitting tab. And if we add a modifier, this time we will add the solidify modifier. And, th and that adds thickness. So we can change the thickness we can make it even and we can work with high quality normals now sometimes like here because this edge is not planar it's actually triangulated into two it doesn't work very well so I'll just go back into edit mode I'll go control tab to get the mesh select mode select the vertices and now erase these vertices if we hit X we can see that the delete menu in edit mode is much larger so we can either delete vertices, edges or faces and we'll cover some of the rest later right. so now we have the original and in fact if we extrude it a lot more there won't be any intersection problems so that's the solidify modifier essentially just adds depth to any object that we have any single plane object or object without thickness okay so we'll just show a couple more modifiers that are quite useful to know so if I shift A mesh plane once again and control R leave this where it is I'll just scale this slightly and this time we'll go to add and we'll add another object which is a curve so we can just select the path curve which you can see down there we'll just scale it slightly we'll go into edit mode and we'll move some of the vertices around hit 
tab to exit out of edit mode. I'll just move this around here. So we'll add the array modifier again with a couple of elements and then add and we see here we have a curve modifier. So the modifiers they're stackable so we can add as many of them as we like and they're non-destructive meaning that if we just turn this off then we don't see it anymore. So now we can add a curve we can select the curve which is the only one that we have now and we see that our array works with the curve now if we wanted to if we click our object again we can add a solidify modifier as well so again I'll just make it a little bit thicker even thickness And we can see now how we stacked three modifiers to create this object. Now if I duplicate this object, duplicate, or I'll undo this, we actually want to duplicate linked. I'll lock the axis again by hitting the middle mouse button. We just move it somewhere. And now I erase all the modifiers. So here it is again, the original object, or rather the original mesh data within this object, which is the same mesh data that's within this object. So now, if we go into here, and we start to modify it, I'll just disable this for a second, enable it again, move and slightly scale these maybe add a loop cut move that point up and if we exit out we can see that all the objects now changed and with this object we can do a another whole set of modifiers that are not related to any of these so let's just do another simple array with another array but this time in the other direction and now we have a grid and if we rotate this object if I hit R or rotate here and then I want to rotate around the z-axis we can see what we can do with this object here now the last modifier I want to show you is the lattice modifier so I'll actually duplicate this as a linked model again and let's see I want to move it along the x-axis I'll just reset the rotation close this window close this window and now we add another object add lattice we just move it over here we sort of just scale it until it more or less covers this array that we have So if we click ob the object data here, we can change the amount of subdivisions that we have. I think that's fine. And now if we click our object again, we go to the modifiers, we scroll the way up, I'll just minimize these, and we'll add another modifier which is called lattice. 
so it asks for an object again we can with this icon here we can select the object or with a menu and these are searchable in case we have many that are the same okay so now this object here it's linked to the lattice and the lattice is essentially a, def a deformation cage so if we go to edit mode and we select some of those vertices we can see how we can move all those items within it. So once again what's really cool is that this object the, the data, the mesh data within this object is the same as the mesh data here and the same as the mesh data there. So if we change just one of those if we hit edit mode you can see it ignores the lattice and maybe what should we do? Maybe we just move that point out that way and we yes and we do something like this so now we can see how all the objects that are linked to this became modified in the same way So that's it for this tutorial in which we explored further how we can manipulate objects in object mode. Thank you and see you next time.